Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Did you know that a Synology NAS can be set up as a UPS server? We're gonna take a look at how that's done in this video. So what I wanna do first is just talk about what is a UPS. And basically it's a backup power supply that allows devices that are connected to it to stay running when the power goes out. Now the hope is that the power is restored before the battery on the UPS device runs down. But if not, at least the devices connected to the backup power supply will be able to be shut down properly and not just a quick cutoff. Now that being said, Synology NAS goes into standby mode. So what is standby mode? Well, you can see here on Synology's website, they define standby mode as when a Synology NAS enters standby mode, it stops all services and unmount volumes in order to prevent data loss and shutdown safely when the UPS runs out of power. It also says by default, the system enters standby mode when the UPS device starts running low on power. You can also specify like a custom time and I'll show you that later on in this video when we go through the setup. And there's also a feature that the Synology NAS will automatically restart when the power is restored. Now, regarding the UPS server, let's scroll down to here and let's look at what exactly is a UPS server. So if you have multiple Synology devices on your network, you can set up and take advantage of the feature called Synology UPS Server. According to what it says here, if there are multiple Synology products using a UPS device with one Synology product connected to the UPS device through a USB port or network, only the Synology NAS connected via USB or network can obtain information regarding the status of the UPS device. In this case, the Synology NAS will act as a network UPS server. The network UPS server then receives the UPS information and relays it to the client Synology NAS. And if you don't know what I'm talking about there, I'm gonna show you exactly how to set this up. What I wanna do here before we actually get into configuring the Synology devices, I wanna diagram out for you on this whiteboard what it is we'll actually be building out in this video. So let's go ahead and add some gear. I'm gonna be adding to start a UPS, a NAS, and a switch. So we have our representation of our UPS. We have our representation of our Synology NAS. And here we have our representation of a network switch. Now it doesn't have to be a PoE switch, I'm just using a diagram of a PoE switch for this video. First, let's get our power connected to the UPS. So we're gonna take the power from the NAS and plug it into the back of the UPS. And we're gonna do the same thing with the power from the switch and plug it into the back of the UPS. So now we've taken care of power. Let's go ahead and connect the NAS with a USB cable to the USB port on the back of the UPS. And there now we have connected with a pink line the USB cable from the NAS to the UPS. The last thing we need to do right here with these three devices is connect the NAS to the switch with an ethernet cable. So we'll do that just by dragging over to port one. And what you see here now is we have power connected in black, we have USB connected in pink, and now we have ethernet connected in blue. If you were in a one NAS situation, this would be a perfect configuration. If there was a power loss, the UPS would go into backup mode, supplying battery backup power. This Synology NAS would be alerted to the status of the UPS and eventually enter standby mode, either when this UPS battery starts to run close to being out of power, or if you specified a customized time in the Synology settings. This would work perfectly in a one NAS situation. But what if you have multiple devices? So let me add a second Synology NAS and I'll show you what to do. Let me bring this over here. And now I'm gonna label this NAS the server NAS. because this NAS will be the one that we set up as the Synology UPS server. And we'll label this one the client. G 
just like that. Okay, so we have our server NAS, we have our client NAS. So the first thing we're gonna do now is get our client NAS connected to the power on the back of the UPS. There we go, we're all set there. We're not gonna connect the USB cable, but we are gonna connect an ethernet cable from the NAS into our switch. We'll just go into port two, and there you have it. So now we can go ahead and we can actually add a third NAS if we wanted to. So let's do that. Okay, so now we have a second client NAS. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna plug the power into the back of the UPS. We're not going to add a USB cable, but we are gonna add an ethernet cable to our switch in port three. Okay, so let's take a look at what is going on here. If we should lose power, the UPS will enter battery backup mode, supplying battery power. The server NAS will be alerted to the status of the UPS over the UPS, excuse me, over the USB cable. And then the server NAS will notify two client NAS over the network of the status so that both of these devices enter standby mode as well. So this is what we're gonna actually build out in the next step of this video, so stay tuned. All right, so now that you've seen the diagram, let's go ahead and build out according to what we saw on the diagram. So this is the DS216 plus two. This is going to be my server NAS. And then this is the DS920 plus and the DS1621 plus. These two devices are going to be the client devices. Let's get back over to the DS216 plus two and get started with configuring the server settings. So we'll come over to the control panel and we'll come down to hardware and power. Under the general tab, come down to power recovery. Make sure you have a check mark here where it says restore automatically when power supply issue is fixed. If you see that it's unchecked, make sure you put that check in there and come down and hit the apply button. Once that's applied, come up to the UPS tab and here's where we're gonna begin the server configuration. So let's go ahead and click on enable UPS support. Here under UPS type, it's going to be USB UPS and that's because the server is the NAS that gets connected to the UPS using a USB cable. Here where it says time before disk station enters standby mode, it defaults to until low battery, which basically means when the UPS battery is running out, the Synology NAS will enter standby mode and begin to unmount the drives. But I like to set a custom time. I'm gonna set the custom time to 10 minutes. You could actually set to whatever you want, whatever works for you. Here you see an option check that says shut down UPS when the system enters standby mode. And then this basically varies by brand and model. So what'll happen is once the device enters standby mode, it'll also shut down the UPS as well. Here under enable network UPS server, it's already ticked for me, but yours is probably going to be unchecked. Make sure you put a tick there. And then you see this option becomes available to you. Permitted disk stations. Now you see I already have IP addresses in there. This is the 1621 plus and this is the DS920 plus. These addresses are in here already because I have already had this pre-configured on my network. However, yours would be blank and this is where you would put the addresses of the client devices. Now, if you had a fourth Synology NAD, you could put the address here but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna enter the addresses and go ahead and click okay. And then here you see under device information, if you click that, it's just confirming for you that this server NAS is connected to the UPS. You can see the status is connected. It's showing you the battery percentage. Again, this may vary for you and it's showing you the estimated battery time. Then we'll go ahead and we'll click apply. And that concludes the setup of the actual server, but we're not done yet. We have to now go ahead and configure the two client devices. So let's start with the DS920 plus. We'll come up to the DS920. Again, we'll come over to the control panel, hardware and power. Under the general tab, come down to power recovery and make sure you put a check mark here where it says restart automatically when power supply issue is fixed. Come down and hit the blue apply button in the lower right hand corner. Once that's applied, come up to the UPS tab 
And here we're gonna begin configuring this device as one of the clients. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click on enable UPS support. In this case, unlike the server, the UPS type is going to be Synology UPS server. You can see from the drop down, there's a couple of different options. This is the one you want. Time before Synology NAS enters standby mode. We talked about what that is. Normally it's set by default the same as server, but again, I did have this pre-configured. So I'm gonna set the same customized time here to 10 minutes. And again, because I did have it pre-configured, it saved my server NAS IP address. So this should be blank for you and you would just enter the IP address of your server here. Notice here, it says no UPS is connected. That's because we have not applied any of these settings yet. So let's come down to the blue apply button in the lower left-hand corner and hit apply. And once that's applied, you see the message does disappear. And if we click on device information, here you can go, you see we have a connected status. Again, the battery charge is 100% and the estimated battery time. So that's all we have to do. Now we successfully have the DS920 Plus configured as a client device. So now we're gonna begin the configuration of the second client device. We're gonna start by coming to the control panel, hardware and power, under the general tab, we're gonna come down to power recovery. Make sure we put a check mark here. Restart automatically when power is fixed. Come down, hit the apply button. Once applied, come up to the UPS tab. And we're going to apply the same exact settings here as we did on the DS920 Plus. So we're gonna click on enable UPS support. The UPS type is going to be Synology UPS server. Again, it should default to same as server, but because I had this pre-configured already, it saved some of my settings. I'm gonna make this 10 minutes, just as I did on the DS920 Plus. Again, it already pulled in the server IP address. This is the DS216 Plus 2 address. Yours should be blank. If you're doing it for the first time, make sure you put your IP address in here. Again, no UPS is connected, but once we hit the apply button, this message should go away and we should be able to look at the device status. So we'll come in, click on apply. And now here we have the device information. Notice the no UPS message is gone. And here we have a connected status, battery charge and estimated battery time in seconds. Okay, so there you have it, configuring a Synology NAS as a UPS server. And you also saw in this video how to configure the client devices as well. I hope this video was helpful. I hope it was easy to follow and easy to understand. If you wanna see more videos like this, let me know by putting that down in the comments below. So if you like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Be sure to check out other videos that I have listed here up above. Please remember to subscribe, like, and share this video. And I wanna thank you guys as I do in every video for using the Amazon affiliate links listed below. It doesn't change your price, but it certainly does help out the channel. Once again, my name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions. As always, please stay safe. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.